<laughs> you can tell I'm real highbrow in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell you have kids. <laughs> oh, you had to have kids to go see that. <laughs> oh. oh. And on that note, it's it's uh, Beer 30 Live. Hey, howdy. How many, you know, we've done uh, 10. I think this is gonna, this is our 10th show. Wow. And, beer 30? And I still don't remember what it's called. You always want to screw it up, though, yeah. wanna screw, I still yeah. want to screw it up, yeah. 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 Uh, I, uh, hi, everybody. It's good to have you around the table here. We've got uh, uh, the always lovely uh, Jamie. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Jamie <laughs> Whitley. Why did you do lovely and look at me? I'm yeah, I don't. Mary I know. I thought so too. But I don't, for yeah. some reason, I'm off kilter here. It's like we're well, we are sitting in slightly different, in slightly different places. Right. That messes it's good me to be up. Here. Yeah, uh, and next to the lovely Jamie is the gorgeous and beautiful and stunning. Oh, please, talented. Mary Bradbury Jones, how you doing, Mary? I'm good, thank you. Wow, what an introduction! Yeah, you know, I'm, I've been practicing all the way over. I had the sunroof open. It is a lovely oh, it's day. Awesome, isn't it? Doesn't d- something about, the, particularly in Oregon, because we get a lot of rain in the winter time, and then the sun comes out, and your oh. mood just me, oh, my yeah. mood changes. I'm like, yeah, woohoo! Totally. Life is yeah, good. In a heartbeat. Well, uh, and everything's blooming too, which I think makes it. Yeah, you know, it a, is. It, it is. smells nice. good. Everything smells good, and then I hear uh, in Phoenix it's cresting a hundred. Uh, right about now. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, yeah. and I think in like New York City, it's uh, almost snowing or something. Oh, yeah. Like there, yesterday got... it was 74, and now oh, it's yeah. snowing. I keep today. telling you guys, this global warming's good for Oregon, so don't even <laughs> go. <laughs> in a few more years, we're going to be like, California, property values are going up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We're underwater, but that's okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> we're gonna, it's going to dry up. Things are going to be good. Yeah. We yeah. have uh, one other laugh that you heard around the table. It is our special, very special guest. We have Hector Arisiaga here. Uh, uh, Hector, welcome to the Thank table. You. Thank uh, you. Uh, today's topic, we're going to be eventually talking about uh, immigration today, and, and Hector has some uh, interesting perspectives on the matter and a fantastic background. We're delighted to have him join the conversation. Um, mm-hmm. uh, first, we've got the news. Do we do we have the news? We, we do have the news. news. All right. Yeah. Well, Mary, well, you have probably the most news. Right? I, of Start course, was going to kick it off. March Madness, of course. And Duke yes. has lost. Really? I didn't know that. They're out. Already. Already. Wow. You know, coming from University of Kansas, we don't like. You don't like Duke? No. <laughs> you can't. Are you guys in any pools so. or anything? You doing the whole? I don't do it. You know, I, I don't. I, I, I didn't this year. It's just time. It's my first I mean. year I didn't do it. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah the first year you didn't do it? Yes. Yeah. I'm more of a geek than a jock. That's me. I don't. Yeah. I just don't understand it. I mean, I don't. I watch the games when I'm there. I can get into it, but yeah. you know, minus the foam finger, and I'm not really. Yeah. Into it. Two years. Let's see. Was it two years ago or three years ago at University of Phoenix? You know, we had yeah. the big one going, and I won the whole thing. Yeah. Well, that's Why? dumb luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Ouch. Hey, hey. Speaking of technology, I do have to comment uh, on Pete's very, very large. Uh, Mixer, large. I'm not making up for anything. Mixer. <laughs> yes, this is that the. Is incredible. I'd like to. I'd like to introduce everybody to the Mackie DFX12 oh. integrated live sound mixer. This thing is built like a tank. Wipe the drool I mean, off your face. Wipe oh. the drool off. <laughs> and uh, Do you need a dolly to carry <laughs> that in. He's going to break out the sound effects. <laughs> yes, yeah. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about at all. But you will respect the Mackie. <laughs> How many inputs do you have? In that? Uh, well, we got we're, we're, we can go up to six now live wow. mics, which is great. But it'll go up to twelve total. So and sound uh, you know, we've got sound effects. We're gonna we're gonna start recording uh, live music. We've got uh, another show we're spinning off here pretty soon, which we'll talk about probably next week, which we're very excited about. And this is is part and partial to that effort. Um, very cool. Yeah, we're we're very impressed. As you should be. Yes. <laughs> Thank yes. you. <laughs> All right, back to the headline news. Yes. <laughs> Mary, March Madness, anything else? Oh, I, of course, was just, you know, I mean, how can we talk news and not talk about the whole uh, Gonzalez issue with the firing of the U.S. attorneys and everything that's spinning out of control with that? Yeah, this actually has been in my mind because it's been in the news lately. So they fired, like, what, a dozen attorneys or something? No, I think it was about nine. Nine? Nine. And they were evidently, the theory is they were investigating Republican misdeeds. Is that... What happened when they got well, fired. or not necessarily, or they weren't investigating Democratic uh, issues fast enough. That was a big oh, one out of New Mexico, which was um, a congressman and a senator wanted the U.S. attorney to speed things up right. in order right. to try to get the uh, scandal to come out right. right before the November election. And, of course, he wouldn't do it because you don't indict until you 
Right. Have a case. Oh, you know, have evidence and right. have a case. You know, well, right. that's oh, always minor and then, things. Right? Minor it's things. Little. Little. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was he was fired after that. And do you know an interesting thing that I um, heard on the TV and haven't had a chance to confirm it? But that guy in Glacius that got fired was the lawyer in um, uh, you know a few good men. You know, with Jack oh. Nicholson, you know, right. you can't handle yeah. the truth. Right. He that's who Tom Cruise was playing. Oh. Really? Was this guy. Yeah. Now I haven't had a chance to actually sit and I truly confirm that. But that's what they said <laughs> on the news. You know, you can't defend this kind of stuff, really. I mean I, why the hell do they have I mean, anybody who's in, in government why do they play those kind of games? It's just ridiculous. Well, games. you're always going to get caught, especially when you have emails for people to look at and confirm I mean, what you've done. For, well, I mean, for more reason, <laughs> you're going to get caught because there are so many people. You're under the spotlight. Yeah. It, right. It's such a huge. Well, Clinton scale. did this too, right? Clinton got rid of like 92 or something like that. Well, they I all mean, do. The they same. all did, yeah. and this is the second or do. third round that this has so, happened in the Bush administration. It, it, yeah. Why? Why be a moron and, and do that? I just, I, I just don't get it. Well, there, you know, there are political appointments, and I. I know a little bit about political appointments because I happen to be a presidential appointment uh, appointee in oh. 2003. Oh, do tell. I think it was 2003 to the board of directors of the Federal Home Loan Bank of Seattle. Mm. So I do know a little bit about you know political appointments, and and that, that I mean it's prevalent throughout government where you know elected officials just simply select someone. To a particular post, whether they're really qualified or not. Well, you would correct? hope that you would, you would hope, hope that the appointment has and something sure to do with qualification. Of course, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. without a doubt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And certainly, I think one of the issues that that is the concern is that these nine that got fired had great performance reports. So yeah. it's you know prior to then their whatever the issue was that they were concerned with. You know, I was going to say though. It's really interesting to me that, that uh, Clinton, his first four years were far better than his last four years. Uh, Bush Sr., Bush Jr., same thing. Ronald Reagan, same thing. I, well, you're a Carter didn't make it that long. Part. So, I mean, or actually Bush Sr. only made it four years as well. But, but <laughs> Other than the, like, 32 years he was actually in the <laughs> right. No, but, but my point is, is and it's so hard those last four years because everything's so entrenched, and, and maybe you lose some of your... Momentum and your creativity and your ideas, and then it just it kind of Jamie, becomes Jamie, this is not about losing creativity. creativity yeah. This is, a, it, in fact, a, an example of great creativity. He says in quotes. I mean, I'm looking here as that they've they've caught Gonzalez on. They have the video now floating around the internet of him lying to Congress. Oh, really? Yeah. He's no, the I, 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 again, that's I, I'm extremely not, creative. <laughs> I'm not. De- I'm not defending him as, at all. Maybe the word creative isn't the right word. Maybe you become more incestuous and, well, and, and mired in your own. It's the issue. Is this? Is it possible to be a second term? To have a second term administration and not be a lame duck. Well, yeah, I mean, I, they don't get jacked done. I mean, really, because the other party's fighting to get them out. And, and again, I think there becomes a little bit of this this incestuous, this nepotism kind of happens, and your buddies are in there and you're all doing the same type of thing. And it gets mired down in this crap. And it's, I don't, I don't know why we, you know, they perform that way in the first place, but still. Four terms, or excuse me, four years, that's it. I'm not going to vote for anybody who's going for second term anymore. No so. more second terms, that's no it. You're drawing the line. Term. I am. Yeah. <laughs> You know, oh, there's oh, there's something uh, when when uh, as time goes by, you know, there are more bodies buried. So yeah. chances are that as you mm-hmm. stay longer mm-hmm. in a, you know mm-hmm. at a particular post, that the greater the likelihood is that those things are going to ca- you know come knocking, just by by a you know by a certain by a matter of time. What about this well, Libby case? Man? And I think scooter. Sorry. Well, no. Go ahead. I mean, it's kind of on the same same. Way, it is. Right? It's the same thing. Oh, right? Same you thing. Have, you have uh, the. Uh, Scooter, what Libby? Scooter Libby, right? It's Scooter yeah. Libby, right? And has been found guilty, of course, for lying and those sorts of things. And really, if you look at it, it looks like it's just a political game coming from Rove and coming from the vice president and all sorts of things. And again, it goes back to this same well, old crap. And um, I mean, he's their fall guy. Absolutely, is yeah. yeah. So you know, and and the the issue with that is, you know, everybody's focusing on. Um, you know, what Libby did and obstructing justice and that kind of thing, when really the real question is the fact that they were covering up forged documents right. to get us into a war. But And so now it's been a great way to detract from what the real issue was, which was they knowingly forged documents in order to make their case to go to war, and we just focus on Scooter Libby and pardoning Scooter Libby and how it's unfair to Scooter, you know. 
all of those things. It, that works perfectly in their favor. Do you think? Do you think Bush will pardon him? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Right before he leaves, though, I don't think he'll do it no, as soon as his, these people are yelling his, for it. Yeah, yeah I suspect he probably will. Well. Mm-hmm. That'll be his pardon. That's generally that's how what it's what done. The, yeah. last, the last 24 hours, 48 hours, all exactly. the pardons. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what? He's going to be on house arrest for the next 18 months, and then he'll while get he's in while he's in appeal. Yeah. But, but really, you got it. You have to. Uh, you have to do that for anybody who took the fall for you during your administration, right? Go to bat well, for them right I, at the end. I have a feeling that was probably what was under the table. Which was, you don't sing, and we'll right. take care of you. Right, good be. Even though, technically, by the laws with pardoning, I believe that you're not a president, by those rules, is not actually allowed to pardon somebody until they've, ser- they've served their time for a minimum of five years. Oh, really? Wow. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Um, huh. No, because Nixon got pardoned, and he never oh, served Oh, there you time. go. Yeah. Well, it, he, wasn't, he wasn't sent to prison for what he did. He resigned before it got to that level. So, in a way, what Ford was doing was trying to pardon his actions from an impeachment standpoint. Yeah, not yeah, necessarily but, saying uh, I'm pardoning him to let him out I've of jail. I've just never heard that. I mean, you might be, certainly you might be that's right. What, now, that's what I've heard. heard. I mean, I haven't done a ton of research yeah. on it. But it actually makes sense because the idea of the, the pardon is that, um, that they've served some time for their crime. Now, Clinton pardoned a whole bunch of people. Some of those, I, I don't remember yeah, if all of those were in jail. Or, went, yeah. 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 Well, but he never pardoned the people that, that, were, that were his friends in Arkansas that were railroaded for one of the scandals, whichever one no, that was. Some of those just were found dead at a park. So. Yeah, yeah, a lot of those guys just never made it. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of which, man, I tell you what, you <laughs> don't do, <laughs> you do not stand up against the government in Russia because that will get you killed. Yeah, I mean, right. How many people have fallen out of windows right. or committed suicide well, or, right. or, it's, or it's drinking Russia. something with yeah, plutonium arsenic in it? poisoning right. or whatever that thing was. Yeah. That, Come yeah. on. Well, it's, it's Russia. It's now it's China. You know, I mean, that's mm-hmm. the that's the same the same issue going on there right now. So right. supposedly, right. and actually look into how many people from Enron have mysteriously died. It's quite interesting. Really? Mm-hmm. You wonder a little bit about that one, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Especially yeah. the guy at, in Houston with bullet holes in yeah. the back of his head. <laughs> he said he committed suicide <laughs> he was in a car. It's the old magic bullet theory yeah. rears oh, its head that again. that was interesting. Boom. You actually <laughs> shot it, <laughs> shot <laughs> around <laughs> behind you and came into your head. Same bullet. It's going Pilates, around. All those Pilates classes that he had to take. And you shot yourself multiple times after the first bullet that killed well, you. Well, why would anybody want him dead? <laughs> I mean... I mean, Why would lost, it? No, no, hold on. They lost billions of dollars, but, <laughs> but in terms period. of... Period. That's it. You just answered. Just put a period there. Yeah. Uh, okay. And they knew things. He got the goods. Who they knew? knew things. These people that have ended up dead. In fact, uh, one guy, is the one out of London, things? was about to work with the FBI on a thing, and then he mysteriously killed himself. We mean the one of the Russian guys that died? No. 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 It was a guy that Enron? worked Yeah, worked for no. Enron. Out of, actually, it was one of the... Was it a direct Enron employee? He was, I think, with the firm of account, the, an accounting firm that did stuff for. Oh, the auditing firm. Yeah. Auditing firm, yes, yes. Yeah. So. By the way, know. ever since we had our last whole political discussion, I've been a little afraid to use my telephone, Mary. <laughs> 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 just, just, just so it's you know. saying certain things yeah. on your telephone. <laughs> oh, is that it? That's all it is. Well, we talk in code now on the telephone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're red dog flies at midnight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so we won't get in trouble. Yeah. yeah, we all know what you're talking any, about. Any black helicopter? <laughs> well, here's over here's there? what James is talking about. Oh, you're the eagle hot. has landed. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'll exactly. be by your house in 10 minutes. That's exactly right. <laughs> and that is referring to... <laughs> <laughs> that is referring to this story out of Santa Fe, Democratic Governor Bill Richardson. Did you hear about this? No. Nope. I have, Big no. news for Bill. Is this what? today? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he has uh, poised to sign a bill making New Mexico the 12th state to legalize medical marijuana. Oh, I did see that. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's going to be him. the first presidential candidate to uh, be in favor of drugs. White House, quote, not happy. Well, a lot of good mm. that will do since we just heard that Supreme, the, what, the 12th Circus Court of Appeals just said that federal law trumps yeah. local law in yeah. regards that, to so yeah. no, but see isn't that I, interesting that always happens just when it's something they want it to oh trump yeah. on and oh then yeah. other times it's states rights yeah. states oh, rights states rights, states rights. Oh, yeah up to that's what i've never figured out about the republicans it's it's well when it comes to certain things it's Get your hands off my money. Get your hands off my land. And then it comes to other things. It's, it's you, know, you know we're, we're in your force. bedroom. Yeah, or, yeah. exactly. Uh-huh. It's like come on, pick one or the other. You know, at least be honest about it, and, and just worry they're going to go this way or that way. But what are the chances? Because what they've come after Oregon multiple times on that and death with dignity, and yeah. Oregon still always 
upheld and won. Mm-hmm. I mean, but I don't know. But well, and they keep trying to back it to back end the death with dignity thing because of the the drugs. They're not letting anybody use narcotics. Yeah, so which that's c- is continuous. Basically, they try to get around it yeah. and, and force you. But see, we I mean, working at the University of Phoenix, we have some people that are cops, and they get caught in this all the time, where where they have to make an arrest for something that maybe they do have a medical marijuana card, but that is not recognized by the Fed, so they're required to make an arrest. But then they end up just basically letting him out. Right. So it's kind of a big joke. No. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, so do we have any other political news that we need to hash out? Because there is... Well, I, no, I, I got to we're part guys, of the tech gestalt. I, I have... Uh, I have read most of Obama's book, and and it's a good book. He's a little liberal, but no. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little too much. For me. However, he does seem very pragmatic and very centered, and with his head and his shoulders. So I, I'm so what's he too liberal far. on? Oh, don't even get me started. We will do that for another show. But okay. but again, he seems like a decent guy. And then of course there's like the new Newsweek or something and he's like that. Clean. Who said that? Who was the oh, one that said that he, yeah. he was clean? Oh, Joe, yeah, it was Joe Biden. Joe Biden. <laughs> he's a clean. I'm running for president. By the way, that other guy that I'm running against, he's pretty clean. <laughs> guy. Oh, come on, what an idiot. Yeah. Well, Joe's known to do that. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's horrible. actually the only one right now that nobody has anything to say about is Governor Bill Richardson. Until today, well, until this, which but, is where he put his own. But if you've own. noticed, he's been kind of out of the whole fray because there isn't much, you know, dirt there, and bad things you can say about him. Yeah, he yet. has about a snowflake's chance. Of yeah, I think. That, yeah, I mean, they just haven't Why? looked at him hard enough because he's Hispanic. Well, just no, be, no, no. I just don't think he's got the personality and the, the mm-hmm. gravitas to get there. He's not I charming. Agree. No, I agree. no, he's got no gravitas. Oh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> But he's been a governor. See, that's the one thing that is, I think it's difficult for senators to actually run because they can do exactly what they did to Kerry, who had so many years in the Senate, but they can take every little vote that you did and politicize it and turn it around, even though maybe you voted against the bill because of all the pork that was shoved in that bill. Right, right. But they ignore that and they say, he's not for these people's rights or this or that. And that's why they say a lot of times governors have the better chance because they don't have all of this voting record that you can yeah. rip apart and hash apart and that kind of thing. Well, yeah, I mean, that's how that's how a governor of Arkansas who marries his sister can win. <laughs> Twice. Oh. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> With like 30% of the vote or yeah, something like exactly. that. exactly. <laughs> nice. Uh, South by Southwest is going on. Are you guys uh, into Twitter? Have you heard about Twitter? No. I'm only bringing it up to prove that we're part of the tech gestalt, that we know what the hell we're talking about. And Twitter, I think, I'm on the record, is the most inane product I've ever seen on the web. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. See what Twitter is? Oh, my goodness. You go to Twitter, you set up an account, and what it allows you to do is send 140 character or less messages to the world hmm. right so you can say so you can be a spammer it's like a text Any message guy can be a well spammer? it's like a text message right okay but it goes to all of your to the public like i could sign up uh, and create an account and have all these followers and then i and then they type messages like and i quote at starbucks sipping coffee blogging at a convention this and you go to the twitter homepage. why do i care that's so the issue. But so let me tell you, South by Southwest, you know what South by Southwest is, right? It's this huge, it started out as a as an indie music conference in Austin, and yeah, it became yeah. a media conference, and Robert Rodriguez started going and talking about how little money he spends on, on his movies and all that stuff. And now there's a whole, uh, there's a whole track devoted to new media and, and like Web 2.0 and all that great stuff. And so you get these, these uh, products. Here is, I'm on the Twitter homepage, a global community of friends and strangers answering one simple question. And the question is, what are you doing? And right? So and here you go. Answering. Here you go. I'm going to read some to you. <laughs> Steph Saul says she's headed to a party across the street, going to meet the neighbors. Uh, Shelby Erickson says, I'm on my way to the gym and dinner. I'm gone for the night. Pelico Zorland uh, writes in Spanish, which I don't. Why do I care? That's that's the question. But this is this is what the reason I bring this up is how because, many people are using it? Yeah, a lot. Well, um, I mean, I'm searching for the hemorrhoid cream. Why do you care? <laughs> Heading uh, well, heading back to Magic Kingdom after a nap. Well, I'll I'll tell you what what's a symptom of of, and that is, this is such a opulent, wealthy nation, the people just can't get enough outlets for the time that they have. You know, if you have people oh in God, Rwanda scavenging, 
you know, scavenging for their food or, you know, all their time just... There's by. that piece, and see, they okay. are so starved to be exhibitionists. They are starved yes, exhibitionists, exactly. and that's the whole issue. I mean, that's, that's why blogging sort of took... I mean, you look at the people who are, uh, you know, Twitterers. I don't even know what they're called. John Edwards is a Twitter. Right, he's. They've already jumped on the bandwagon because they see this is where that vocal population resides right now. Oh. Uh, I don't get. You know it. what I the think funny thing implode. is that you have you have actual people that are tweeters, mm -hmm. and then you have posers, which is even worse than a tweeter because it's not really genuinely a tweeter, but it's a yeah. poser because he thinks that he got he's got an audience. Yeah, yeah that are tweeters. He thinks that yeah, he has an audience. I, right. I agree with Hector a lot on this. When when your society <laughs> reached a certain point of of. We have everything. Uh, yeah. We, we don't have to worry about our food generally. Even, and again, I'm going to maybe generalize a little bit, but even our poor, if you spend time in other countries, are, are not really that poor. And, and so we have so much given to us, and, and we don't really have to work that hard for it in a lot of respects, that this is the type of outlet we're, we're so bored we write one yes. sentence to other people in the world. Well, I'm going back to Magic Kingdom. Yeah, Woo you have to stop yeah. and think about, okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom right now. Is that Twitter worthy? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't have time for that kind of debate. Well, I know you don't. You're like, where's the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> but it yeah. could it also be a result of where, and we've talked about this before on other shows, where studies have shown that Americans right now are at the highest where they feel the most isolated and not connected to people well, and connected to community. So could that also be some well, of that? Well, it could which be. Is, it's absolutely true. Our technology has isolated us more than brought us together and, and caused... And, and, one is one of my passions. I, I think when you look at depression rates and alcoholism and, and yeah. rela failed relationships, unfortunately, a lot of it ties back to isolationism and, and, and the way we use technology. And we don't even know who our neighbors are. People live side by side and right. don't even know each other. They don't. We have no communities mm -hmm. left anymore. Yeah. And well, and that was interesting. I mean, this this conference. One of the tracks I thought was so fascinating was that one of the most popular tracks was on we F to F face to face. Right. <laughs> that. You know, we have all these technologies. You have Second Life where people ad adopt these whole other right, personas. Right. And they go in and they say that's community. And then why are conferences still popular at right. all? We know it's really funny. It's, it's, it, we have to actually make an acronym like F2F yeah. to, to describe it. And yeah. it's just crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, uh, or maybe for what this is, is an, you know, uh, outlets for you know, some of your introverts or people who tend to not, person, from a personality standpoint, aren't the type that would go out and hang out and talk to their neighbor. They're, they're shyer. They're more reserved. They're, and so then all of a sudden technology is giving them an outlet where they can do that. Well, I, I, I think, think that's some the of positive spin of the side of that. I, I mean, that's, I mean, I that's the just, theory. You know, but certainly. I think but that's why introverts like online classes is because they get the chance to, you know, first mull things over before they respond um, but also they don't have that pressure of that yeah, but think talking face-to-face -face and talking off the cuff. They're spiraling behaviors. Mm -hmm. You know, a person that's an introvert but whose only ability to communicate with the world is to go out and meet with people will very likely not retreat completely into their room and Twitter or whatever that's called, <laughs> yeah. right? I think they, they just twit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what a great name for anybody. Yeah. Are you a twit if you're a Twitter? <laughs> well, I interestingly, mean, that... the guy who founded this, Evan Williams, also founded Blogger. So he's gone from which Blogger cool. to Twitter, which, which is, is cool. Which is cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, actually, we were talking earlier, and this brings up kind of a, a, a side but related issue. Have you seen the movie 300? No. Yeah, no I'm mm, yes. Yeah. yeah. You saw, saw the movie 300, right? And, and for anybody, I mean, it kicks ass. And, and it's a guy thing, kind of. But as I was watching it, and it is a fantastic movie, and I, wa and I got out and I watched all these other guys talking about the movie and stuff. What I realized was we don't have leaders in, in society like that. And one oh, of the absolutely. reasons why we go to absolutely. movies to see that because we want to see things that we're be inspired, be inspired yeah. by stuff that for some reason in our corporations and different things we don't do. I mean, when Leonidas stands up there and basically says, F you, right? I mean, how many people really want to do that at work and we can't get away with it, you know? Or, and, or you want a leader who's willing to stand up for you and, and fight with you or for you as an employee, and your managers don't. And, well, and so we go to the movies to kind of at least live it a little bit for two hours because we can't even get it on our own jobs. I think that's the first part of the discussion. I think the second part is uh, you look at those 300 guys, and they believed in a cause. Absolutely. And I think there are very few causes that mm -hmm. people believe in at that with that level of ferocity or they anymore in, their, in this country. But they believe Other in their than leader. Making money. 
That's but, a big cost yeah. But for I mean, you look at like look at our major corporations. I mean, is there is there anybody there that you believe in that you would follow? Yeah. Like. You know the stories of yore. You know? Well, but it's more than just the cause itself. It, it's the leader. I had a great conversation with a student who uh, several years ago got not several, four or five years ago, I guess, got out of the Israeli army. And in Israel, you have to serve. Right. And the question he posed to the class, and we had this great discussion, was, "What will make men follow a leader in the Israeli army when you're not paid? You have nothing to really. I mean, what is it? And you know what they fight for? Their leader." I mean, that's yeah. really what it is. They, they mm-hmm. bond together. They fight for their leader. They really fight for each other. But, the but, cause is is secondary. Yeah, and it's, it's taking care of each other. You know, there. When I was kind of going through the process of getting my citizenship, I took the time to learn a little bit about what America was and how it came to be, right? And I got to meet, I guess I, I could say, the founding fathers. And ever since that time, I've been just reading everything that I can. About those people, because why? Those, what is it? What is it that inspires you about that? Well, discussion? you know, and I, not to not to use a cliche, but it was when men were men, you know. <laughs> and I don't mean males were males, but I'm thinking when a person, when they said honor, virtue, truth, it meant something. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember there, um, I read this, the biography of um, of John Adams, and he writes to his son, and his son is attending college, and he's telling him. You know about being virtuous in his studies and and to to be diligent and to and just the way he talks to his son and to his wife and it's just amazing the way people had these principles and they lived them. They didn't just talk them, right? They actually lived them, right. and they it was a sense of of fulfillment and pride for them to actually live this way. And that you know now we were talking earlier and about they were huge visionaries, right? And we were yes. talking earlier about politicians. Who say things, whether they believe in one yeah. ounce or not, they would right. use the words to try to convince someone that yeah. they have some type of affinity, when in reality, those people don't even believe what they're right. saying. See, and I think right. that's what we're missing in societies today. We don't have that, we don't have anything that really brings us together. We don't have this common vision. We don't, and so we're twitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's the loss of principles, I think. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. People, people don't don't live anything. I mean, everything is relative. Yeah. Well, and I, I think, though, to some extent, some of that is because we're so focused on just, in many ways, a lot of people keeping their head above water. Sure. And so they're trying to keep a roof over their head for their kids. They're trying to save so their kids can go to college. They're yeah. trying to... They're also buying into the marketing messages. They're well, trying they're to... they're buying into commercialism. You know, they really yes, are. they're buying right. into that. Um, and so I think with that, there comes a... I mean, do you really need a harm? There is a, down, there is a downside <laughs> to being a capitalist society. Well, but it doesn't mean that capitalism's bad. It just says there are a downside when it's taken too far. Downside well, that was probably never really considered. Right. Well, I, I right. mean, capitalism but, certainly has its, its... You have winners and you have losers in capitalism. And, right. And, and, yeah, but, you know, and the winners continue want to be the winners and they don't like other people winning. Because, right, see, true. wealth is relative. It is true. And so but if everybody in society is getting richer, then the gap between the, the highest wealth with the highest power and the next level is decreasing, and that threatens this level. I mean, that is human nature. But I think, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm the only Republican in the table, obviously. On the, oh, no. Know, oh, no. But, no, no, no. But, no, but no, I'll tell right you, or, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you that Independent. regardless of, Whatever. Regardless of all the <laughs> failures or all the, all the uh, you know, problems with capitalism, it is the best system. No one's denying that. And, yeah. and I think just the ability for a person to have the opportunity to do with their lives what they choose yep. is above and beyond better than any system that has ever been devised in government. Absolutely. Where, where some you know, entity or a government will predetermine your life for you. Or, uh, I, or take so yeah, much of your life that you can't really do much. In a right. socialist society where maybe we'll take 80% of everything you make and distribute it and to just everybody else. It, it's yeah. like, come on, why do you have any incentive to really do anything? Right. But in a capitalist society, we do have winners and losers. But I think the challenge we have in our capitalist society is we actually have a shrinking middle class. Yes. And, Absolutely. And, and we're, we're 
our overhead in terms of government and, and regulation and healthcare being a huge issue, yeah. it's it's out of control. And so our middle class is getting squeezed yeah. on both sides. And, and, it's, and, I, and, I and, and, here, what, and here's harder. what I will challenge. I don't think you ever see anybody who sits on their deathbed that says, boy, I wish I would have screwed more people. Man, no. I wish I would have made more money and but not spent not so much time with my kids. What do right. they do? They but lay on their deathbed and they say... I wish I would have enjoyed Absolutely. life more. I wish I would have been nicer to people. I wish I would have spent more time with my kids. I wish I would have made a difference in someone's life. No, but those they are not capitalist do issues. Those are not yeah. a matter of, of capitalism or not capitalism. But, but capitalism at the ba- is the base is about money. And money, oh, you know. Oh, no, 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 no. I think it's about opportunity. And it's about freedom. I mean, capitalists, yeah. you, you That's can, democracy. No. 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 Capital, the difference between a capitalist and a social society is capitalism, capitalism, you can have land, you can have you have freedom. And they don't have that in Canada? Well, well they do, but... Or reason, Denmark or Sweden. Yeah, I was going to no, say Canada. No, no, hold on. No, 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 hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. But in a social society, <laughs> they take most of your income and, redis- and, and redistribute it. So in a social society, we'll redistribute it. In a communist society, of course, then the government owns everything. But but we live in kind of a mix between a pure capitalist society exactly. and a socialist society. Right. So we're somewhere in between. Libertarians will tell you we're too far socialist, and Democrats will say, well, not enough socialist. But the point is, is we still can pretty much keep everything we make, and we can do whatever we want with it. That's capitalism. I think what Democrats say, at least my perspective as a Democrat, is you can take care of people and still make money. And still be profitable, and still have opportunity. I think and when the entire society is doing better, as a whole, we're all doing better. That's yeah, the, the concept. Wikipedia would like to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're giving you way too much power. <laughs> yeah. Let me uh, let me just say, I, I think this up. is the, why this is interesting because it, it addresses a there's a key point in in the definition of capitalism is that it is it refers to an economic system. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? It is an economic system and yes, that yes. means money. Right. So no. it, it it means a way of managing a society it's and the free. way the, the finances work. Right. Production, privately owned and operated yes. for profit. Yes. yes. And, and profit that is that means money. money. Yeah, but profit sure. is not an obscene <laughs> word. Sure. It's a republic of like, God, God, you're getting yeah. redder by the For minute. For some reason, profit has become yeah. an obscene word, and it shouldn't be. I no, agree, I totally no, agree with that. No, it shouldn't, until it's abused. No, there's... What? Well, you can't abuse you profit. You can't abuse okay. profit, <laughs> let me tell you. There's, 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 right. You can abuse here's, people here's or, or real, circumstances. The problem is that, is that profit is, is a, it's a nasty word because it's so often compared to poor. It's so often compared to abuse. Like this yeah. company is making a huge Halliburton is is you know pillaging Iraq. It's Speaking a war of which, profiteer. Though, nice of Halliburton to decide to, to move, move their headquarters. Yes. I, I tell you what, I, I defended them even the no you know bid contracts, all that kind of stuff, up to the point when they said, Hey, now let's move our headquarters overseas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is a public show. I, but it, see, it there, that, this, me off. that is my example right there. And that's of what I was going to say. Where capitalism is going too far. That's the downside of us putting so much emphasis into one area that we lose balance over here. We tip the yeah. scale. That's I, my point. I agree. Right now, you have in our country, you have the top 10% of this country own 70% of the entire wealth. And of that top 10%, the top 5% have more wealth than the entire 95% but let combined. Me, let me flip that, that equation. That's a balanced scale? Let me flip that equation, Mary. Because those same people also create 90% of all the jobs and all the rev- you know, all the paychecks. Where? That They're people- taking their firms out of the country. Well, one firm. One I mean, firm? we're talking about Halliburton leaving, but it, honestly, we those people... We can't outsourcing. Outsourcing is a reason. I mean, it, yeah, it's it, an economic consequence. We outsource because... If we didn't, goods would be too expensive, and we wouldn't buy them. So we don't have a choice. Yeah, if I was, you can have a balance. You know, if I was going to make a shallow argument, I would blame outsourcing on unions. Yeah, that's a very shallow. You know, well, I, and I, <laughs> but, well, but, but I think that's the typical but argument but that people it, hang their heads on. I would, you know, that's something but that somebody could But unions are all about stop. democracy in the workplace. That's why they were formed. Is so that the oligarchy couldn't abuse the workers. That you're, was the right. point. You're a oh, union I, thug. I forgot about that. Oh, yes, she is. You know, I was a union worker for you know several years, and I understand. I, what it means. I don't believe I, in I don't believe in black and white. I believe in balance, and I believe in gray. That's where I'm different. So I say I think you can have both. No, you're I not different. I think things can no. be. I think people can make money, and we can take care of people, and we no. can have not 40 million children sitting here with no health insurance in this country. I, I it's don't, a I sin. Don't think, it's I don't horrible. think anybody at this table doesn't believe in gray. It's just a matter of how gray. 
where, where somebody like me who's more conservative would say, well, maybe we've gone overboard in this area. And you might say, well, we haven't gone far enough. I mean, I think that's yeah. the argument. That, and, 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 may, and that's a good argument to have. And, and that's okay. I think that's what a good society and a healthy debate is about. And, and it'll always fluctuate back and forth. Well, uh, uh, go ahead. Finish your thought. I'm sorry. Well, I lost it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would, I, I would say, for example, that you could blame either side for, say, the demise of the middle class. Right? Some might say, well, the, uh, the Republicans are killing the middle class right? because they're taking all the money. And someone might say, well, the Democrats are killing the middle class because they're distributing the wealth and they're taxing people right. beyond what they can afford. Case in point, the alternative minimum tax, right? We're getting to oh. April 15th. We're getting Don't to even give me uh, started. I'm so pissed it started off. started with a couple of hundred year. people. A couple of hundred thousand people or a million, I don't know how many. And all of a sudden, now here we are, you know, April 15 of 2007. And how many people are going to have the, to pay yeah. the alternative and, minimum And tax? you know what my response to be with that would be? The, the original, the alternative minimum tax was for people who had at some point so much wealth yes. Yes. that, and this was, you know, that they shouldn't be able to s send so much off into tax sheltered accounts. Right. The reason it's unfair right now is we just it's haven't stepped never back adjusted. to say we need to adjust yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, so all Democrats say is you need to adjust it so that this certain level of well, people aren't hit with it. And move it back where what it was intended to do for that top for 10 for the top 10 yeah. but now we're addicted well, see, to the revenue and so now it becomes really hard because we've expanded government to take advantage of that revenue to things maybe the government shouldn't be doing and exactly. now we're in a tough looking spot. at the deficit we haven't expanded the government we've expanded yeah. the government regardless of revenue well, yeah. I mean, this is not Ronald Reagan's party. There's no, no doubt about it. And, and I was going to say, it's There's like the on the Time front magazine, of Time magazine yeah, with Ronald Reagan crying. It's so true. I mean, yeah. we, the Republican Party has been bastardized by the religious right and, and other folks who have just taken it far more extreme than this this conservative. Uh, and and even, even Clinton, for his faults, uh, a, a smaller government that, that does good things and the right things rather than this all encompassing thing it's become. It's horrible. And see, I'll even you know, you, defend you people who are clearly... If you if, if you were Barry to do the father of conservatism was about conservatism from fiscal spending and taxation, and he also was had socialist views Absolutely. on the other side. I, I, I think that's the way most people are when it really comes down to it. But we've you know, bastardized it so much, and our government has gotten so. Here, yeah. Okay, here would be another example of if you know we have the post office right now. You have Bush cronies now sitting on <laughs> the board of the post office wanting to. Right, privatize the post office. Do you know how many middle class jobs the post office brings to people? Good, solid, long term middle class jobs. And that's where they go postal on have people. We, ha, oh, come on. That happens very rarely, but okay. But the thing is, is but wh what, what's wrong? It? Is it not working? I mean, I put 39 cents on an envelope and it goes from Portland to Kansas City in two days with 100% accuracy. No. What's the problem? The if, if it was that good, there wouldn't be any FedEx, UPS. Oh, well, they were in the business. On. That's yeah, not the. They just they just missed a market things. niche, and people came onto a market niche. That's all that was. Yeah, absolutely. The the post office could have owned those markets as well. Right. They just weren't enough. smart enough and yeah. didn't jump on that. Right. So it's very typical of government workers, though, to be really slow. <laughs> that kind of stuff. So. I, I actually am not. And a big IBM fan. nearly failed because they Absolutely. didn't get it about a PC, a I, small joking. PC. So okay. I, I'm not a big fan of privatizing the post office because they do a, re, a really good job and they do create a lot of good jobs. Now again, and you also could think about what they it. deliver too: people's paychecks, Absolutely. social security yeah. checks, but your again, voter cards. But it, hold on, we can't think so that we way. We want to pay it, someone seven bucks an hour now to deliver those things. What again? If if that's if the, they get if, there, yeah. If that's the mark we should well, use the, though of good middle class jobs. Then we should we should the government should take over everything. I mean, so we can't really use that as the watermark to say should we privatize or not privatize. I think the issue is quality, you know, and right. and, 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 and and good for the the economy and those sorts of things. But again, we could privatize it. We could so probably spend less money and have better quality. And maybe that's not a bad thing. I mean, isn't that what? Business Wait, you've about. had a real issue with your mail? No, I love the post office. I think they do a fantastic okay, job. So where's the quality problem? I, I, I didn't say they did, but oh. maybe you could come up with a system that is better and less expensive in the private sector, and, and that's you not know, bad. You know, what would be fascinating if any, you know, like a like a school decided to do an audit of all the activities that the federal government undertakes today, compared to their federal constitutional mandate. How many things is the government doing today that are outside the constitutional 
Yeah. Well, that's a very good question because it shines a light on the argument that the government says is it's a constitutional right to bear arms. It's a constitutional right to. Well, then why is there? Then if you're doing all these things that are outside your constitutional mandate, right. then how can you hang your hat on those arguments when you're talking about? Yeah, uh, you know. Well, but we could say it's a copyright, and trademark, and patent disasters, and I mean all these things. I mean, are. rights is an interesting question. Do we have a right to health care? I mean, I, I believe we do. The Constitution doesn't say anything. The Constitution about that. So does not say we do. Yeah, yeah. And, but and it says the right to per happiness, the pursuit of liberty. It, so you, you know. can't produce, you can't have happiness without. I can healthcare? be free and happy and sick. I mean, I do. Well, <laughs> well, you are sick. I just went to the dentist for the first time in 13 years. Can I tell you? Not a cavity. Yeah, really? but you haven't been yeah. to a dentist in what? 13 Dude, years? Dude, you should have those things scrubbed every couple of years. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back on the... I, I gotta, Why? I'm a role model for my kids, so now, I, now I'm on the... You I'm have back health on track. insurance. Why weren't you going to the dentist? Fear of retribution. <laughs> you didn't That's want to true. find out how many cavities you I had. I just didn't want them to call my mother. <laughs> I'm sorry, I completely sidetracked us, but this is, the, this is a very important issue. I mean... It, uh, I'm sorry, I will challenge the fact that the parent who has a child dying of cancer and can't get any health care is truly happy. I think they're miserable. I would be. Oh, well, I agree with you on this. I, I mean, people I do. at the extremes in the end, so I'm, and I'm not going to discount them. The question is, as a whole, is health care a right and in the best interest of the society? And yeah. when the Constitution was written, hell, we had no idea what it was. So now well, you didn't even live to forty. Exactly. And now we're having this debate: <laughs> is is it a right? And have I you guys seen Idiocracy? It has to do with quality of life. Uh, I have. Idiocracy. Anybody? No. 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 Put it on your. I rent list. Put it on, okay. This is the same guy who did it, Mike Judge, who did Office Space. Oh, okay. And it's about in this society where you know, what if the thinning of the herd didn't work right, and all the smart people who were busy with their careers didn't or didn't have kids. And all the stupid people had lots of kids. What happens in 500 years? <laughs> well, and it's you don't have to go 500. You go 40. Yeah, you can go about 40 yeah, like years. Generations, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it is it is rich, and and it uh, well, and, and that's really the discussion, right? Is what happens? Like the the argument is, well, those who can will. Those who can't, well, let's go back to Darwin. Perish. Thin them off. Right. I don't know something to be said for that. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I kind of I mean, subscribe to that. As I well. mean, you got the help, and it's I think true. That's a depressing way of looking at life. <laughs> really, I mean, quite you, frankly, you do have people who abuse the system, the point. Who, who continue to have children and and you know suck everybody's resources. Money out and, and well, see, what the hell are we doing with it? But that's what happens. You know, people people don't take responsibility for themselves or their children or whatever, and then they complain because you know, you know, Punjab comes over from. From India and takes a ninety-five thousand dollar job working for Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. And well, you know, if you went to college and you yeah. got an engineering degree and you did what it takes to get there, you yeah, probably you would have that, that job. I mean, yeah. it's not like it's selective to some. That's that, true, and because the the most vocal opponents of those of that argument are the unions and the yes. folks who wouldn't be qualified to make that yeah. job to have that job anyway, based on their skills. Well, and this is what this is the problem with socialism. Socialism breeds and it, it enables people to not work, and, and and enables people to to say, "Well, you owe me." And so then, after a while, you create this society yeah. that has no real incentive to do anything. We don't have that I don't think that yeah. entitlement We don't have entitlement in our country. country. We have a lot of entitlement. Give me a break. Yes, Believe we it or not, do have a lot of entitlement <laughs> in our country. Believe it or not, even under socialism, they are elite classes. Yeah. And they are the people that you know actually went through the effort of becoming something. Yeah. And those people will always live far and above, far and beyond above the rest of the citizenship, regardless of the doctrine of communism and equality. But there's little incentive for those guys. And yes. I, have a, I have a friend who's from Denmark, and he'll tell you, he, one of the reasons he's come here, he's like, listen, we don't do anything. We don't innovate anything. Right. We don't build anything. Right. It, it, tax rate's about 80%, and, and everything's taken care of, yeah. and, and work days are six hours with the two-hour nap and all this kind of stuff, right. and I guess it's wow. kind of cushy, but... I'm thinking Jeez. I should go to work for IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> but, there, but there's so I work nothing. six hours and I yeah. enjoy life the rest of the time. And I can and eat chocolate when I go a on lot. maternity leave, I get a year and my husband gets six months. Yeah. So. No, they're bored. They have high stress rates. They're, uh, you can they, do they something have, about that. You know, bored? alcoholism they is In high. Denmark, I mean, go skiing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, again, Jamie, all, no, again Jamie. no, 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 but here, Jamie, all, all those, have, all we those. as a country outblow everybody in alcoholism. We outblow everyone in suicide rates. We outblow everyone in our health issues. We have more heart attacks, per heart capita? problems. Yes, I don't know. About I'm not that. sure. Absolutely. About that. But we also have more freedom, more opportunity, more wealth. All right. So, so let's ask that question. Capitalism has. Why did you come here? I mean, 
Well, Why actually, did you I want to come to the United States. I, you know, I came on vacation. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I was I just graduated, you know, my undergraduate systems and industrial engineering, and I was going, you know, I was just taking a little time off to go, you know, and visit the states, and then I was going to get back and either go back to school or get a job, and I ended up staying. Uh, my brother was going to school here, and and um, just happened to. Uh, go down to the employment office and I got a, you know, the nice lady there said, well, there's a job across the street and you can, you know, go apply. And I, you know, I was washing cars and doing sandwiches at a kind of like an Arby's and washing dishes. And, you know, back in those days, to tell you the truth, all I needed was my, uh, my student visa, my tourist visa. And nobody asked very many questions about, are you legal to work or not? And, and um, and so when I realized that all of a sudden that I needed to, you know, to have some work documentations, then I started working on that and immediately got on it and, and got, um, got a work permit. But back in those days, it wasn't that big of a deal. People weren't so worried about it. Um, you know, obviously today the, the picture is changing or has changed radically, uh, maybe because of the, just the sheer mass. Um, I, but I, I'm guessing it's just the volume. I well, mean, yeah. really. Of, yeah. Of, what did, what did they say? I read a statistic the other day that said that just if, if the state of California were to try to keep up with the demand for getting all the kids to school, even mm-hmm. though that their native replacement rate, pro, uh, reproductive rate, is below replacement rate, right? People are having fewer native kids than to keep the population going. They would still have to build a school a day, yeah. every day, yeah. in perpetuity mm-hmm. to keep up with, with the growth of, from, of immigration alone. Yep. So that gets back to your issue of socialism versus capitalism. I mean, here we are. What do we do with all these people? What do we do with these people who, do we? Do they have a right? They're here. They're in our country. Do they have a right to the same basic rights that we do based this, on geography? I mean, you know, this nation has a dilemma because you have, now you have an extension. You have the people that came here illegally. And you have, you know, and I'm just going to use a gross generalization, but you have the person that came illegally, and then you have six, their six children mm-hmm. who are all American citizens, right. mm-hmm. who according to the Constitution today, yeah. have every single right as you or you or you to be here and receive every single ounce mm-hmm. of the government protections and the law protections as anybody else, green, red, white, blue, whatever color you are. Except their parents. Except their parents, right? So the country has a dilemma in the sense of saying, do we change the constitution and say you can no longer receive citizenship if your parents are illegal or by virtue of having now legal family here your children can request you to become legal right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i believe that as long as there is a demand for labor there will be people that risk their lives to come and stay here Mm -hmm. want it or not Regardless of who's in the White House, this is still the best place in the world. There is no other nation on this earth that affords so many opportunities to a human being to be whatever they want to be. And people will risk their lives, whether it's in a raft crossing from Cuba or running across the desert or swimming across the Rio Grande. People will risk their lives just to make it here. Just for the chance. Now, if if, if they had... um those same opportunities down in Mexico, and they had the chance to make you know a good living, take care of their family, you know. Because from my understanding, in a lot of reading, you have a lot of people who are here working and all they're do- working to send money back to their family, so yeah. they're actually separated from their family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if they had those chance, and if coming back and forth wasn't as complicated as it is, right. also, would we eventually maybe have more people saying? You know, I'll stay down in Mexico. Well, see now you're my getting, family's there, my culture's there, that language is there, uh, my history's there. Now you're getting to the complexity of the issue, right? It's not as simple as saying, okay, the people are here, we're gonna give, you know, an interim interim work permit to this many because of these circumstances, right? You still have a neighbor down in Mexico whose economy is nowhere near, right? And and who, you know, it's gonna, it's just virtually possible to bring him to the par economically to the United, you know, with the United States uh, within a reasonable amount of time. 
which which means that people just for sheer lack of opportunity will risk their lives to come here. And also you have the apparent, you know, the perception that making it here is easier than making it there. You is know, that even, true? It is, you know, because, I mean, you come here, and even if you're washing dishes, or if you're working at a car wash or a sandwich shop, right, you can rent an apartment. Fruit. Or picking fruit. You can rent an apartment, you can have a TV, you can have a VCR, you can go to McDonald's, you can drive a car, right? Even at minimum wage. You can wage, get a visa. Yeah, even at minimum wage. I mean, you can have a standard of living that is above and beyond what it would take a middle class person in Mexico you know, with a degree. I mean, some of these people, ding, they ding, just... Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and so that's, that's, the issue. Yeah. that's the complexity of the issue, that people will say, you know, it's going to take me 20 years here to get to buy my little Toyota. If I go over there and, you know, if, if I work at, uh, at a restaurant washing dishes, you know, I can have a nice apartment, I can go to Disneyland, I can, you know, do all these things. So people will, will, will risk it and come. You know, we had Fernando on the show uh, a while back, and his idea was that if we created a more seamless way for people to go back and mm-hmm. forth and, and then actually tax that and, and use that as a way to raise money for the government to then help pay for the situations where we have illegals or we have uh, you know, children that need taken care of and those sorts of things, that that would create a better economy for us and then we could get the labor that, that evidently we need at some point, yet at the same time people wouldn't fear not being able to go back and forth right. to be able to support their family and those sorts of things. To me, that seems just like well, and, a and I think one of you go. know one of the issues, and this is something that he brought up too. And my understanding is there are certainly a certain amount that are sneaking across, mm-hmm. but a, but a fair amount of the quote illegals we have here are people who came here legally. They just didn't leave when they were supposed to. Right, right, yeah. and that's also the right. issue, which would be why do we have this rule that they can't reapply again? Right. You know, that it's not this one-time deal situation, so that they could reapply again, and they're, and they're legal, yeah. and those yeah. kinds of but things. You, you I have mean, to that's, understand that's the that, other point. You know, if you allow people, and I, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm the one that I got in and closed the door behind me, yeah. right. right? Because that's not my attitude. But you also have to understand that if you allow that to happen, then you have everybody applying for a visa just with the hope that they'll get it once, and once they're here... Because there's a law such as that right. that allows you to continue to reapply. But couldn't you have standards? I mean, you could have some standards oh, around how, why you get to reapply and well, why you get yeah. accepted. I mean, Should you, you have know. to be able to speak English? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, you know, in and order I, to I maintain, yeah, in order to maintain the standard of living, you know, to which people r- will risk their lives to come here, you have to have an integrated society. That is to say, you can have people that are culturally diverse, that have their own traditions and their own foods and their own music and so on and so forth. But you can't dilute dilute the you know the fiber of, of Americana and still expect that America will continue to be what it is today. Because it won't. If you fragment it into a lot of many countries Which is what we seem which to is what coming. is happening, right? Then you no longer can can pull and push um, in a uniform manner as you have up to today. Well, I think yeah, you have to I give agree. people a chance to learn the language. Oh. I mean, I think well, the well, expectation yeah, yeah, that they're yes. going to come in here yes. with no. that no, 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 is no. unrealistic. No. Services and different yeah, things. Like absolutely. Right, right. But I, I, and maybe part of what gets your, your visa renewed or whatever is that you have been doing what you've had right. to yeah. do to learn the yeah. language. And I don't yeah. think there's you know, anything wrong Or things that. like that. But what, ha- what happens, Mary? What, you know, I mean, to be realistic, what happens? You have a person that's come here and they're ready to reapply and they don't pass the test by two points, right? Then what do we have? Then you have somebody saying, well, he almost passed it. He's yeah. done everything else right, but he didn't pass this one part of the test. Right. And then so you start backpedaling, and then you start saying, well, it was 85% of the answer is correct, but now we're going to make it 80, and now we're going to make it 70, and now we're going to make it 50. There's now always going to be that last percent. Well, we do. Yeah. We always well, lower yeah, our standards. But I yeah. mean, and, well, yeah. but... I mean, just because that's how we've always done something in the past doesn't mean that then the, the possible solution needs to be thrown out with the bathwater. I, I, I mean, I think that, that that you make a great point, but look what we have right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so that's not working. I mean, so well, that's I, the point. I, I think it's funny that we can we can certainly find the political will to build a wall, but we can't find we can the political find a lot will of money to do it to, to come up with a halfway decent, reasonable yeah. solution. I mean, I mean, a wall works to a certain degree, but 
God, there's got to be a better way to manage yeah. it than just trying to put your finger in the dike. That's just right. Like, come and, on. And the point is, too, is that, but you know, Hector said, they come here because there are the jobs, which means if we also want to be serious, we hold the employers accountable yeah. Yeah. for hiring illegals, and they know when they're hiring illegals. You start running yeah. people through a system, or even yeah. if it's just once a year, once the government's run their report, and all of a sudden here come all these Social Security numbers that, that aren't matching up. They know who's, who's doing they that. They do, but we don't necessarily want to catch them because the other thing is, is we like our cheap goods. Yeah, there's no way. Exactly. And so we like our cheap labor. We yeah. we are, are very much a consumer society, exactly. and so we start complaining if things yeah. start getting too expensive. And yeah, the same person, so, you know, see, the same we can't person. Have our cake and eat no, it too. I, I, mean, I, agree. The, I, I agree. The same person with a Confederate flag on the back of their pickup, saying all these Mexicans are ruining my country, are the same people that like to go. To Walmart and get two dollar tomatoes, exactly, you know, yeah. or fifty yeah. cent tomatoes. I don't know how yeah. much you they are, got it, and they're not yeah. willing to make that willing, sacrifice. Exactly. If yeah. the tomatoes were six dollars, yeah, you know, they suddenly would go, oh, it would be a, a very minute. different thing. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's you know. You guys, uh, I'm glad we solved this issue of immigration. <laughs> this is well, clearly, uh, I have to tell you though, I am so glad to have somebody else on this panel that actually is as smart and as intelligent as I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so <laughs> this is so. Well, we did. We had a nice yeah, discussion yeah, of what we got off topic. From really what was the main purpose. Don't we but always unfortunately, get off topic? <laughs> we don't have Barboy here today to keep us in line. Yeah. Uh, Shane, oh hope you God. got your washing machine. Because we've been going an hour, and we it's just not the same hour? without wow. you. Wow, oh, my God. Yeah, we have. It's yeah, been I'm long. Close. But, uh, yeah. you know, it really is. This is, uh, obviously, we, we very didn't solve it, but it's very good yeah. discussion. Hector, thank you so thank much you. for That's joining us. Thank you. Great being with you guys. And uh, great. it's been a real pleasure. Uh, you can find us at beer30live.com. Send us email at Pete, Jamie, Mary, or Shane at beer30live.com. We've got a new website coming. I've been working on it. It's pretty cool. I hope it's cool. Excellent. Let's see. Cool. Uh, and uh, I think it's a buy swag t-shirts all available on the website anything yeah. else Everything did I miss good. anything else no. oh I meant to put mine on today uh, I know me too I had it in my office. come visit us down sure. here yes at, uh, you know what AP. we, uh, we, we are at the uh, McMinimans uh, John Barleycorns in Tiger next door to the Home Depot and uh, Friday afternoon uh, it's about 3 o'clock drinking Stop beer in a church yeah around yeah, 3 o'clock we're here although next week we're taping on a Saturday we're also taping on a Friday. Oh, we're doing both. We got a Friday and a Saturday. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Now, now I know. <laughs> That's important. That's good you to know. Check email, James. No, it's a wow, good one. I Saturday. Know. I'm I'm excited about next week too because they're they're. Yeah, tell them what we got. Yeah. 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 No, I can't talk about it. It's a surprise because it's a surprise. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I mean, that was great. You're very intelligent. Very well spoken. And with that, we're out.